G'day everyone, Viv here. Welcome back. I hope you're all keeping well. I hope you've been enjoying this short series on how to learn to play tribal. Now I've got set up here on the table an example for how we can learn at least part of how combat works and specifically in this video about the combat hand. So I've got my mud men on the table here with the black cards. I've got the Maoris on your side with the red cards. And these two units on the table here and these two units on the table don't have a card next to them, so they've probably been activated, excuse me, or done something during this turn and used their card. And I have two other units here on the table that still have cards next to them. You can see the white counter on the side here, which represents or at least helps remind me that the mud men have the initiative. Now, you don't need to put anything on the table, you can just remember, it's very easy during the game, but you know, for the help process of helping me remember while I'm filming you know, all of these videos, what's going on, I'm using a counter to help me remember who has initiative. So that means that the mud men are gonna activate. They've only got one unit that they can activate, and they're quite close to this unit here, so I'm gonna activate them as usual, and according to the activation video, I'll flip the card over, my opponent gets to see it, I'll activate them, and I'll move them into combat. Now you can see I can't fit the card entirely on the table here. You don't need to move the full distance of either a walk, run, or a sprint. You can move part of it. But at least I know that my unit is gonna reach and make it into combat. So now I'll keep this card to the side. Everybody else will just pile in. And now a round of combat is beginning or a combat engagement has begun. My opponent now takes his card into his hand and he will draw a number of cards equal to the number of wounds in his unit. Now, each warrior has one unit. In a full healthy unit, there's five warriors, so there'll be five wounds in total. So he'll draw into his hand a total of five cards. Three, four, five. And he keeps those cards. You know, I don't get to see them. That's for him to have a look at. For the purposes of the video, we'll keep everything face up. I will also do the same. I'll take the card that my opponent has seen, and that was my activation card, into my hand, and I will draw five cards from the deck, and that will form my combat hand. Now, because I charged into combat, I have the advantage. And because I only ran into combat, I get to draw an extra card from the deck. If I sprinted into combat, then you know I don't get that extra card. There are some nuances which the rule book will explain. But you know, for you know the all intents and purposes, you know, the very basics, I will draw a number of cards into my hand equal to the number of wounds in the unit that I'm fighting with. One wound per warrior, five wounds per champion, six wounds per chief. So a chief will draw six cards into his hand. It is important to know at this point that we will only ever play five rounds of combat in what I call a combat engagement. This is back and forward, back and forward. Well, I play a card, my opponent will play a card, we'll try and beat each other's cards, and then the higher score wins, etc. and we'll learn all about that in a minute. But um, regardless of the number of cards that I draw into my hand, we're only going to use five of them. So you can see here, I've got six cards. The five for the five wounds, the one because I charged, I might or you might get extra cards because of uh, you know, scenario conditions, because you've got skills that you've upgraded your unit with, um, different battlefield conditions, whether you're on an elevated platform or such, you might get more or less cards depending on those circumstances. But as I said, for all intents and purposes, you'll draw a number of cards equal to the wounds, plus skills and battlefield conditions and all that sort of stuff into your hand and this will form your combat hand right now let's have a look at how we go about fighting a combat engagement as i said it consists of five rounds where we go back and forward i charged into combat so i have the momentum it's called advantage in this game if you have advantage then your opponent will always play a card first and you get to re react to it if you lose advantage during this combat engagement, you will then play first. So all you need to remember um, is that whoever has advantage plays second. So I have advantage, you need to play first. You have advantage, I need to play first. Let's have a look and see what happens. So the Maori player is going to have a look at his hand and he's going to determine, okay, what am I going to do now? Let's talk about what the cards mean. 
you can see in a normal deck of cards there's black cards and there's red cards. Black cards are called strike cards and they'll always do damage. Red cards are called faint cards. They don't do any damage, but they allow you to uh, modify cards in the subsequent or the, or the following combat round. Obviously on the black cards, you've got spades and clubs. Both of these will do damage. The club cards are specific or provide extra benefits, again, which we'll learn about in a minute, to warriors armed with short weapons. Spades will provide extra benefits to warriors armed with long weapons. Let's see if we can get another card out here that's got a diamond on it. So diamonds allow you to modify your opponent's card, change it to a different suit if you want to. Hearts will allow you to change your card to you know, a different suit if you wanted to. And the more games of tribal you play in, you know, during the course of these uh, videos and then the, you know, the subsequent battle reports or full game experiences that we'll play, you'll see how that becomes relevant and where the tactics or, or how you might use these cards in specific circumstances and um, provides you, you know, some tactical advantage. Okay, so let's get rid of this king because it didn't form part of the hand. So the Maori player needs to play first. Again, keeping in mind that the mud men have advantage, so they need to play first. They're going to come out strong and play their highest strike card, this Ten of Spades. Because they are armed with long weapons, when they play a spade, you add plus one to the value of the card. So they've just played an 11. So I'll leave that to the side here. Now I think, okay, well great, can I beat that 11? What am I going to do? My guys are armed with short weapons. And as you can see, I've got a couple of twos here, and you know, nine, five, I've got a king, and I've got an ace uh, and an eight. Now the only thing that I can beat this 11 with, keeping in mind, you know, he's got long weapons, he's played a spade, so this 10 becomes an 11, is my king. Do I want to spend my king at this point to win this combat round? I'm going to. So I'll play my king. The highest player in a combat round wins. Whether it's a black card or a red card, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, going all the way from twos, all the way to aces, and then the joker. To, uh, all the jokers are in this deck, both the black one and the red one. Um, so I beat uh, my opponent in this round. Now, according to the rule book, they do say that the winner will take both of these cards and put them to the side so that you know how many rounds of combat during this engagement each player has won. But I find that you know more annoying, really, than simply putting a token on the board to remind me that uh, I've won this round of combat or my opponent has won a round of combat. Sometimes I'll use a white token to represent draws, etc. So I need some way of being able to track how many rounds of combat each player has won. Because at the end of the day, that determines who's won the overall engagement. So we'll get rid of this. I've won one, and I do that simply so we can keep the two decks separated. That red card belongs to the red player, the black card belongs to me, so both of these cards now get discarded out into their discard piles, and we play another combat round. And we go back and forth, back and forth, and we do this five times. I've done one point of damage to the Maoris, so they lose a warrior. I've won one round of combat. The winner will maintain or, you know, um, take advantage. So if the Maoris had won, they'd have advantage and I'd have to play first. In this case, I won, so I maintain advantage. Now the Maoris need to play again. So he'll look at his deck of hand and go, okay, well, what am I going to do? The uh, heart allows me to change my cards if I win a round of combat. But, you know, I've got all strike cards. So, you know, maybe I don't want to. So maybe I won't play that eight. I'll go in strong again with my highest card. It's an eight of spades. Again, I have long weapons, so this eight becomes a nine. Now, the mud men will look at their cards and think, okay, well, what do I want to do? Hmm. So I can play an eight of spades as well, and I can um, hopefully draw it. Well, no, I can't, because I have short weapons, so my eight remains an eight. He has long weapons, so his eight becomes a nine. I'm going to lose that round. So I might play this nine here. It equals the value of the card that he's played, therefore it is a draw. Nobody has won this round. No wounds are caused, nobody wins the round, it's a draw. So the cards, again, 
get discarded. This is mine, this is his, and a round has been drawn. Now, if you draw a round, whoever has advantage loses it. So I had advantage then, the mudmen had advantage then. They've lost it. It's now the Maori's advantage and the mudmen must play first. Okay, so we don't have many good cards here. I'll go back in strong again with my highest card. I'm gonna play my eight. He's gonna have a look at his cards and have a look, okay, well, he could equal my eight with his eight, but it's gonna be a draw. Nothing's gonna happen. He could play, you know, this seven of spades, which becomes an eight, and you know, nothing's gonna happen. So I'm thinking that I wanna retain my strike cards, because at this point I wanna do as much damage as I can in you know, the following rounds. We've still got three rounds to play, um, or two after this one. Um, so I'm gonna play my eight against his eight. It's another draw. So we'll stick those cards over there. We'll discard these cards. That goes over there. This goes over here. And it's another draw. Now they've just lost advantage. It's come back to me. So I'll have a look at my hand. And we go back and forward, back and forward until we've played five rounds of combat. So I'll play this six, which beats the five. So they do a point of damage and they win a round of combat. They've just won that round, they have advantage, so I need to play. Now, I've got two cards in my hand, but we've already played one, two, three, four rounds of combat. So I only can choose one of these cards, the other one's gonna get discarded. I'm going to try and do some damage with a two, and I'll discard my last remaining card. He's only got a seven left in his hand, so he'll play that. He'll win this round of combat, kill another one of my mud men, We'll discard these cards. And we check to see who's won the most rounds of combat. Obviously draws don't count, so we'll get rid of these. The mud men have only won one, one, one round, and the Maoris have won two rounds. So the loser needs to withdraw away. They need to withdraw a full card length away. and maintaining coherency as normal, and they must end their move within a short or further than a short edge away. That's a round of combat, forming our combat hand at the beginning, and then playing through five rounds of combat. There are some circumstances where you, you, know, you might not have five cards in your hand, but you still need to play five rounds of combat, and we'll have a look at that later on. So for example, you know, just quickly, if this unit got into combat again, it would only have three cards in its combat hand because it's only got three. Uh, three warriors, one, two, three wounds. The Maoris would only have one, two, three, four wounds, so they only have four cards in their hand. Um, and we'll look at that scenario a little bit later on. But for the basics of, of you know, this combat engagement, this back and forward, back and forward, that is how we fight combat. Might sound a little strange. It does take a little bit of getting used to. Obviously the suits of the cards and the faint cards all have their purpose and they'll come in useful at different points during the battle, sometimes when you need them and sometimes when you don't. But, um, you know, so be the ebb and flow of battle, right? There we go. Any questions, queries or comments, as usual, leave them in the, in the comments below. Description as per usual, full of links and information for you to uh, have a look at. Um, if you've got, uh, you know, anything specific that you want to mention, follow those links off to Facebook pages or, as I just said, put them in the comments. Hope it's been useful, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.